In the after pick, boom, 2022 again in the offensive lighting, but two years finasteride, one milligram other day, also been derma rolling 0.5 millimeters weekly for four months along with minoxidil. That is a hyphy transformation, my friend. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about a two-year finasteride and three months of minoxidil derma rolling transformation. This was sent to me by a few few individuals. I often get uh, you know testimonials or reviews or you know just thanks messages over DMs and whatnot of different people who have transformed and reversed their hair loss by implementing uh, simple pharmacologic interventions. And some of the transformations are. Fucking wild. This was one that was on not our subreddit, but a, a hair loss dedicated subreddit. Two years finasteride, three months minoxidil, derma rolling. Um, and you can see his uh, not super thrilled face in the before 2020. Very sad that my hair is going. Taking the most offensive lighting possible. So this is often the type of down lighting that you will end up discovering your hair loss initially. You know, whether you're in a, for me, it was at a downtown club. I was uh, in the bathroom washing my hands under pretty harsh down lighting like this. And I was like, holy shit, is that my goddamn scalp? Or actually, I think it was actually in a fucking Red Robin's parking lot. Now that I'm thinking about it too, I took a selfie. I had a chick in the passenger seat and I'm taking a selfie and I remember seeing the picture after I was like, damn, this is a bad picture. I do not want to post this because I can see my scalp. And then I was like, holy shit, this is uh, the start of the end, bro. I'm fucked. And then maybe it was, maybe it was in the club. I don't remember exactly. It was one of those two moments. I was both times though, maybe it was my realization that this was actually happening. The first picture or the club, I was like, holy shit, I can see my scalp. And then the other second scenario was like verifiably like, oh shit, like I'm actually fucked at this point. It's actually happening. This is going downhill real quick, boys. So in the club, I was washing my hands and I was looking in the mirror and I was like, damn, I can see my scalp. The lighting is like literally showing parts of my scalp right now, despite the fact that my hair was totally styled, everything was totally fine. I shouldn't have seen it, you know? I was not used to it. It was the first time I'd ever noticed. And I was like, God damn, I am not immune to hair loss. I thought I was. I remember at like 2021, I was like, yep, never gonna happen to me. I'm fucking good to go. Not a chance, boys. It takes 30 to 40% of your hair to be miniaturized before you actually notice the visual representation cosmetically of actual loss because you have like 100,000 plus hair follicles on your head. If I literally took a handful of hair and ripped it out of your fucking head and I took out a thousand hairs, for example, which is a lot, you wouldn't even notice the difference. You know, if you're an 18 year old guy with model looking hair and you, you know, had a bunch of hair loss overnight, you lost 2000 hairs even. Would you notice it in the mirror? Probably not. However, once you really get up there, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, especially in concentrated areas too, where you have more propensity to androgenic alopecia, like your temples, um, potentially the crown region, um, these are areas that got get decimated real fucking quick if you don't get in front of it. And it's a lot harder to reverse hair loss than it is to prevent it from happening in the first place. So this is why I always compel people to take this shit very seriously, even if you don't think you're prone. At the end of the day, I know very few old men that have perfect looking hair because ultimately the majority of individuals, aside from Ronald Reagan and some other hyper genetic elites, have perfect hair for the entirety of their lives. Most grandpa level humans, <laughs> what the fuck kind of way was that to say in elderly person, a person who is of elderly age or a grandpa level person. Um, how many of them have perfect hair? Like even guys who are like, my grandpa has good hair. I'm like, does he really? Like, does he have the same hair he had when he was 18 years old? Or is it acceptable for a grandpa? Probably acceptable for a grandpa, but doesn't, does his hair look how you would like your hair to look right now? Like, would you be happy with his hair currently? Cause that is what you're potentially on the road to. And it's not necessarily even him. You could get these genetics from different individuals in your family. You don't know where they're gonna come from. You can't say it's your mom's dad for certain. I have done videos debunking this in the past. It is not always the same place. If your mom's dad is a perfect head of hair, you were not exempt. You might be just as fucked. And most individuals, it is just a different speed at which you are getting there. It is a process that is continuously happening at a microscopic level some more precipitously than others, but it is happening nonetheless for nine out of 10, 9.9 .9 out of 10 people who are men who have 
functioning balls that produce enough testosterone and DHT, unfortunately. So now finally getting to the before and after. The before pick looks pretty fucking nasty, bro. Like this is some severe diffuse thinning. Having like, I don't know, his recession and diffuse thinning almost reminds me of me at my starting point um, with how it's going up in the middle here to a point where you almost have like a weird reverse recession going on because the temples aren't as aggressively impacted as your like entire androgen exposed i don't know like it's kind of hard to explain like diffuse thinning versus temporal recession some guys they get all of their hair stays completely dense at the front and then it just goes back and back and back whereas for some individuals it kind of like creeps back in uniform fashion to some extent because you have loss that is like uniformly distributed across your scalp and that's more so what i have and seemingly what this guy has interesting how his temple here is like pretty fucking intact and then it's like so aggressive here but mine sort of look the same to be honest and the after pick boom 2022 again in the offensive lighting but two years finasteride one milligram other day also been derma rolling 0.5 millimeters weekly for four months along with minoxidil that is a hyphy transformation my friend fuck dude you would not even think this guy had hair loss before um that's really good like almost like transplant level good it was like a really straight hairline too. Like this is like a very, very not typical, but great, pretty fucking good result. Like there are some guys that get insane results. This guy is definitely like on the upper echelon of response to, I would imagine a lot of this regrowth was facilitated not just with the finasteride, but this three months of minoxidil and derma rolling definitely moved the needle for regrowth in some capacity, I think. Granted, the time frame hasn't been that long for doing it, but I think he still has more density to regain then given how shortly short of a time frame he's into this but that is a very very promising reversal given that he is only three months to minoxidil and derma rolling he should get back a more pristine like teenage-esque hairline with density soon and uh maybe look like he's never had hair loss to begin with and that's pretty fucking good considering that his literal scalp is showing here like pretty far back too like this is like like literal dead zones almost crazy uh let's see looks like hair transplant but good for you great progress if just meds hair transplant never mind hair transplant oh doesn't know what the acronym is wow looks like a hair transplant i guess you were never going to give it up never going to let you down i don't want to disturb the peace and i know that for some people hyper responder meds work and saw results way better than this but the hairline looks very straight and similar to hair transplant congrats man he was a diffuse thinner those with male pattern and baldness won't be so lucky due to the way we bald Diffuse thinners lose it all at a similar pace. Yeah, so like, again, diffuse thinners, I think oftentimes will have a better looking result after because it's, you're not dealing with totally dead zones. Whereas for guys who have temporal recession, you end up with like hyper aggressive dead zones just creeping back continuously. And you're not really dealing with preventing the, I don't know, the middle part from going back as quickly. But the, temp, the temples, when they go dead, like you have to get, to regrow those, you have to go pretty fucking hard on the growth stimulants from what I've seen for guys who have like aggressive loss. Because for this, he's still working with some hair here. Like it looks so sparse and not there that it's essentially bald, but there's still like activity. Whereas for guys with temporal recession, oftentimes they end up, by the time they're on a regimen, they have like actual dead zones to fill and they have to go pretty aggressive on the microneedling and minoxidil. And when I say aggressive, I don't necessarily mean they have to like use a bigger depth fucking needle or something. I just mean like they have to get on top of it quick and be very, very sustained on the regimen. And they have to actually implement it to begin with. Whereas for guys with diffuse thinning, sometimes you might get away with less interventions because you have, I don't know, more flexibility because you don't aren't dealing with like a totally dead area necessarily. It still has some, you know, some hairs there, you know, holding up the fort, so to speak. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, it's a crazy result. Um, let's see. Age now, currently 28. If no hair transplant, this is the craziest I've ever seen. See Bernstein Medical. Similar results were achieved for some peoples. Did you get a hair transplant? Not had one yet, unfor yet fortunately, but I'm glad that you think these are surgical level results. Bro, what the fuck? This was just off meds? Yes, meds plus dermoral. How does it feel to walk around with hair, that hair compared to 2020? You came back from the dead. Fantastic. Second ha picture hairline looks very transplanty. I'm sus, but grats. Such results are possible and happen all the time. I've seen many people reverse hair loss and restore hairlines on finasteride alone. He caught it early, which is key. You got hair transplant, bro. No, I'm not crying laughing, but borderline. It's meds and dermoral. 
Congrats, bro. Can I ask, when did you start seeing first improvements from finasteride? It was a good few months, I would say about four before I started to see a real difference. Um, yeah, so you have to keep in mind too, when you do these therapies, the hair life cycle is long and expecting instant results is not realistic. You may experience actual regression temporarily while you have a shedding phase before you actually get to the results period. I know other people have said this, but there was no way this is not a hair transplant, but then I don't know why you would post this lie about it. <laughs> um, the hairline, the density in the first inch or so. I'm not convinced this is just meds. Sorry. It's just meds crying fit, not crying, laughing, but borderline. I don't think I'm even the best meds only transformation out there. More plates, more dates, YouTube channels. Some amazing ones. Fuck. Yeah, I think we do. Um, but this is a really good one. Definitely. Like I said, an upper percentile transformation, given this is harsh, the same harsh lighting too. Um, like he definitely represented it pretty fairly, I would say. Uh, yeah, like fuck, dude. I can like barely see scalp here. Like he's outside in natural lighting. Like you would not even think he had a hair transplant. So I don't know. Pretty, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that it's a transplant, by the way. Like I believe him. I just think it's, uh, it is a very good result. Um, but. This is ultimately the reason I'm making the video is because there's still hope even if you've lost ground. But ideally, if this guy, you know, caught this early enough, he would not have had to be such a hyper responder that he then was able to make this progress to begin with because a lot of people won't make this much of a recovery. Some people will be non-responders to minoxidil or like over 50% of individuals will be minoxidil non-responders entirely and get no results from it. However, Obviously, you can change this through things like microneedling, um, sulfotransferase enzyme manipulation with tretinoin, um, compounded minoxidil preparations, you know, plug Merrick Health if you want to actually get, you know, access to prescription grade versions of these ki kinds of compounded medications when warranted by doctor oversight, if warranted. Um, stuff like that is, you know, commonly overlooked and can literally double your results. Um, the microneedling specifically, but also like actually turning yourself into a responder as well. You know, finasteride deployment, all of these things are going to be impactful, but not everyone will have the same response as this guy. But a lot of people could have just avoided getting to this place to begin with if they were just on finasteride from day one or some sort of, you know, if they responded well to a topical antiandrogen or, you know, like ultimately you have to get some sort of 5AR inhibition. I, ideally, if you respond well and don't have side effects, check out my finasteride side effect videos before you just delve into this haphazardly. Um, or a topical antiandrogen, ideally one that has a you know high safety profile. Pyrolutamide looks kind of interesting. That is coming out soon. I might do a video on that. My go-to would still be RU for cost effectiveness, to be honest, at least even me personally. But um, if an FDA approved medication that is prescription grade comes out, you know, by all means, better topical antiandrogens may be in the pipeline in the near future for clinical approval, which is cool. Um, and this kind of stuff is how you stop the progression. Like minoxidil is a growth stimulant that will help you regrow lost ground. But ultimately the thing that prevents loss, finasteride, Anti-androgen therapy, ideally ones that stay localized to the scalp. You don't want a systemic one or one that gets into circulation, ideally. So a topical anti-androgen is relatively selective as well as 5AR inhibition, with 5AR inhibition being the biggest needle mover in my opinion, ultimately. Depending on the individual, it's slightly individual dependent, but most people see the most results from 5AR inhibition. Uh, but again, be mindful of side effect profile, but also don't hold off of treatment for so long. This is a very well-tolerated system of inhibitory cascades that is uh, um, typically going to be well tolerated, but you have to be mindful of the side effects, which I've talked about before and I compel you to dig through my hair loss prevention playlist to get the real scoop on, you know, all of the different aspects that come along with this shit. I've made hundreds of fucking videos at this point. But yeah, this is a great inspirational before and after in my opinion and shows that um, even if you're, you know, dead essentially, you know, you can come back from the dead if you are a good responder or never get there to begin with by being proactive. That is the ultimate strategy in my opinion. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, found it, you know, potentially fucking wild like I did, you know, I still get shocked by these good transformations even though I see them all like fairly often. Like I am very impressed when I see them and I'm very happy to see individuals improving their lives and getting very, very um, I don't know, their self-confidence back and whatnot when they see these kind of reversals. It's great to see. So anyways, 
All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My fast drying, non oily minoxidil preparation. Um, I don't talk about this very often, but intelligent minoxidil. This is designed specifically to not be greasy as fuck and make your hair look trash. What is the point of using minoxidil to grow your hair back if it looks horrible 24 7 perpetually because you're applying shitty oily greasy stuff morning and night twice a day this is a preparation that will dry fast and allow your hair to not look like a disaster um which is my biggest hang up on most minoxidil preparations is the oiliness factor to be honest in addition my recommended hair loss prevention shampoo ketoconazole based shampoo um you can get a cost effective uh Nizerol from like amazon or costco or whatever but you know for me personally i like to have a good shampoo that doesn't just you know, suck the nourishment and hydration out of my hair. Um, Nizrol makes my hair kind of look frizzy and kind of like, I don't know, suck dry essentially. <laughs> nah, it's, uh, so you, I just get a high quality, good shampoo with ketoconazole in it. So that's linked in the video description as well. It's not that significant of a needle mover, but it's, you're gonna be using a shampoo anyways. You might as well use one that has some anti-androgenic, anti-fungal properties. Some people have like scalp, actual environment issues too, and this can actually help attenuate hair loss caused by that, um, which is worthwhile in my opinion as well. And then access to like pharmaceutical mediums like finasteride, um, in addition, compounded preparations of minoxidil, that's all stuff you can find through uh, Merrick Health as well as preventative medicine, hormone replacement therapy, options with medical oversight if warranted, diagnostics, lab work, even genetic analysis may be coming soon. Um, we're pretty turnkey and we have high quality doctors in our camp that understand the nuances of hair loss, the side effects that could come from trying to inhibit these kind of enzymatic processes and whatnot. And it's worthwhile to have a doctor in your camp who's overseeing this kind of stuff in my opinion. So you can check it out. We also have like hair loss um, blood tests that are designed to kind of assess your hormone profile before you start these medications because you will any kind of hormonal therapy I always advise a baseline in case you do encounter side effects it's good to know where you stood beforehand to see what has been thrown off if you end up with gynecomastia on finasteride maybe you could have avoided it had you known beforehand that you had like literally super physiological aromatization into estradiol and you had low normal DHT already and you already had like borderline sensitive nips and you had finasteride into the equation, maybe you're one of the unfortunate individuals who ends up with actual gynecomastia development. This is something you probably would have wanted to know with some sort of, you know, metrics of assessment beforehand, what your risk profile might be going into a medication that increases your estrogen production by 15 plus percent. Just stuff to be mindful of. So you can check it out um, if you want to support me or any other companies that I, uh, you know, I own or I'm associated with in some capacity, it's all in the video description below. It's much appreciated when you guys use my links, my codes, um, buy my stuff, as well as just liking and subscribing and commenting on the video. It's all much appreciated. Talk to you guys soon.